In today's tutorial, we are going to dig a bit into the history of JavaScript. We're going to talk about the JavaScript engine, the thing that makes all the JavaScript we write possible. This is a behind the scenes topic that I feel is important. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also, check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. Now, the JavaScript engine is the code that makes sense of the JavaScript that we write. It is what causes the JavaScript we write to work and do something. Let's take a moment and talk about the JavaScript engine, its different incarnations, where we encounter it, and so forth. Now, first, the JavaScript engine, or the very first JavaScript engine, was developed by Brendan Eich back in 1995. And he developed it for the Netscape Navigator browser. He's considered the inventor of JavaScript. And he wrote the engine so that it could take instructions, which became known as JavaScript, and cause the Netscape browser to do something that wasn't possible before. And so that was the first JavaScript engine. It was rather rudimentary compared to what we have now. The first versions were mainly interpreters. Modern engines use just-in-time compilation, which is much more efficient, and it causes JavaScript to run faster. Plus, modern engines have a lot more that they have to deal with with the JavaScript language because many things have been added since that first iteration of 1995. Now, JavaScript engines are usually developed by companies that produce web browsers because web browsers are the main applications that we think of when we think of things that interpret JavaScript. And so web browsers need that JavaScript engine. Now, really quick, let me show a diagram here that illustrates how a browser incorporates the engine. So the engine is a piece of code represented here by this blue. And the purpose of that code is to take any JavaScript that is written and cause it to do something. Well, that is incorporated in a larger application. The larger application being the browser. So the gray area represents the browser the engine, the JavaScript engine, is incorporated as a part of that. Now, in 2008, Google released an engine for its Chrome browser. And this engine was called the V8 engine. And it was the first engine to use just-in-time compilation. And therefore, it was much faster. So all the other browser developers, they had to catch up with the V8 engine. They had to work on their own engines and make them just as fast. Now, another important point about the V8 engine that was developed by Google was that it was open source. Now, this is important, and we're going to take a look at why it was important in just a minute. But first, let's look at some of the names for the different engines in all of the different browsers. So first off, we mentioned V8. That is the name of the engine for the Chrome browser. Now, the name of the engine for Firefox is SpiderMonkey. And this same engine is used by all of the Firefox forks that are out there. Now, Apple calls its engine JavaScript Core. And so it's used in Safari and other WebKit browsers. And then finally, Microsoft calls its engine Chakra, which is used in the Edge browser. Now, with all these different companies developing JavaScript engines, you can see the need for a standard, something that will keep all these JavaScript engines interpreting the language in the same way. And therefore, we have ECMAScript. That's where ECMAScript comes in. It specifies how the JavaScript engines should handle the JavaScript code that is written. 
And so it makes it possible for us to write JavaScript code and for it to act the same way in different browsers or almost the same way. At one time, things were not as similar in the way JavaScript was interpreted as they are now. But we can thank ECMAScript, the standard, for making it possible to write JavaScript and being able to expect it to run the same way in different browsers or different environments. Now, since ECMAScript is a language specification, it was intended for JavaScript, but that doesn't keep it from being used in other languages. And another language that you may have heard of that ECMAScript is a standard for was ActionScript. This is the language behind Flash. Now, interestingly enough, I spent multiple years earlier in my career doing a lot of ActionScript development. And the languages were very similar. JavaScript and ActionScript were very similar. The main differences between the languages was a result of the outer environment. For example, the browser has the DOM that we need to interact with, and we can use JavaScript to interact with the DOM. Well, Flash had other assets. Now, before we finish this discussion, we need to talk a bit more about V8. I mentioned the engine is open source. Well, that made it possible for others to incorporate the engine and not just in browsers, but other applications. Now, the most notable example of this is Node.js. Node.js is an application that runs on a machine, particularly a server, that incorporates the JavaScript engine. And so Node makes it possible for JavaScript to do things that are required on a server, such as write files and other types of file manipulation. Just like a browser makes it possible for JavaScript to interact with the DOM, Node.js makes it possible for JavaScript to interact with the server. So if we take a look at this diagram again, the application is Node.js and it runs on a server. And then it incorporates the V8 engine, which is the JavaScript engine, as a part of its application. And this makes it possible for us to write JavaScript code in Node and have it do things on the server. Now, Node is not the only application that has taken advantage of V8. Another that you may have heard of is Electron. Now, the purpose of Electron is it allows you to build desktop apps using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And in order for us to use JavaScript to do that, it incorporates a JavaScript engine. And the engine it incorporates is the V8 engine. Now, multiple applications have been developed with Electron. And they list some of them here. Probably the most famous is Slack. You may have used Slack. Another that you may have used is Atom, which is a text editor. You may have used that in some of your development. Those were both done using Electron. And so the code behind those was JavaScript. And that was interpreted using the V8 engine. So the JavaScript engine is what drives all the JavaScript that is now a part of so many environments. And it all started with that simple interpreter back in 1995. Now, hopefully this discussion was helpful. If you have questions or comments about all of this, please leave them in the comment section. Before we are done here, please hit that like button. And remember, I've provided discount links to all my courses in the description section. If you'd like to become a patron of this channel, there are additional benefits to certain levels. For example, you can get access to the code files I use at the member level. You can follow a link in the description to learn more about that. You can also contribute by visiting my website. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. Also, click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away, or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com, for a complete list of tutorials and courses. Thanks for watching.